Hello, I'm Jeremiah Dewey. I'm the Director of Incident Response Services here at Rapid7. I'm here to talk to you today about tabletop exercises. What we'll go into is the definition, but we'll also talk about what a tabletop exercise perhaps may not be. And we'll also go into the methodology and some tips on conducting and the frameworks put around them. We'll start with the definition. Uh, there are many definitions out there. They may vary by word, but they generally agree on the salient points that tabletops are simulated threat, uh, their threat exercises in which the participants will gather in a fairly low stress environment to discuss incident scenarios. Now, what exactly is that? Well, it is an opportunity to practice. Once again, it is a low stress environment. It's really a dress rehearsal of a live incident. Uh, it's also a compliance need based on your, your uh, industry that you're in and the regulations that govern it. It may be a need to do these at least on an annual basis. Now, what it's not is a live fire exercise. Depending on the maturity of your environment, a live fire exercise may be a very good way to go. Perhaps a blue team, or as we call it, purple team in our environment where we have the red team involved as well. Another thing that it is not is a training class. This is indeed a rehearsal. It is not an opportunity to pull everyone together and teach them how to do this. This is a chance to run through your incident response plan to see how good it is and how well you adhere to it. One of the first things to decide when you get into a tabletop exercise is exactly what type you want to run. You can go with an executive tabletop or a technical. What that dictates is really what the audience will be for the exercise. Now, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Oftentimes you can have an audience consisting of both, but it is advisable to look at the beginning to figure out what the majority of the audience will be. And looking at the methodology, there are some steps to this. The first is preparing. And while you're preparing for a tabletop, it's a very good idea to go through a realistic scenario that will truly test your staff, the environment, and really be based on what true threats to you may be, and also the maturity of your organization. If you're just building your incident response team, it may not be a good idea to test them on something such as an APT type nation state threat incident. They may not be ready for that. And you may already know what the results will be if you go into a scenario that deep. The execution of the exercise is generally a few hours and it can last up to a full day, though we generally prescribe about a half day for executing the exercise. This is where the audience comes together. You go through the scenario that you developed and you ask questions as it goes. We do advise that, they are, that these are scripted to some extent, but not entirely. If they go entirely by a script, that does not allow for you to diverge as the day goes on based upon the answers of the audience. At the end of the exercise, after it concludes, that's the time to gather findings, look at how the exercise went, and report based on the day. Some tips for conducting these, as I mentioned, conduct at least annually. For some of you in your industries, this can be dictated. For others, the regulatory framework may not dictate that. We do recommend at least annually. For more mature practices, perhaps you could do them quarterly or twice a year. Don't make this a softball. I've seen many who, who want to go this route, or they may pull in the entire audience when planning. You never did well in school taking a test that you wrote yourself, right? Obviously, you would ace it, but it is not a good way to test yourself. Tabletop exercises are the exact same. If the entire audience is pulled in to create the scenario, you're not going to truly test them in the incident. Create a team of trusted agents who will be involved in the planning and then involve the audience as you conduct the exercise, not when you're planning. In addition, you can utilize counsel. This may be a surprise to you. Most think of utilizing counsel in a reactive manner, but they can be of great help for you in proactive exercises, for policy development, for planning, this can be underprivileged, but we caution you against going under the guise of simply doing this because of that. So I hope this has been helpful. That's it for this week's Whiteboard Wednesday. We'll talk to you next week.